Alright, so this screencast is about how to customize your terminal window, how to add a little bit of swag to it, and how to make it a little bit more convenient for you to use. So I'm going to open up terminal, and I get something that looks like this. Now your default configuration might be different, you may have configured parts of it so it looks a little bit different, but for the most part you might get something that looks like this. And I don't like this because there's a lot of information here that's not really useful to me. If I CD into my desktop, it's kind of hard to see which directory I'm in. I don't really know what this means or how it's helpful to me to know, so I want to customize this. Before I do that, let me just quickly say I'm using Bash version 3.2.48 and I'm running a Mac 10.6.8 but for the most part this should be universal across whatever operating system you're using. So the first thing that you can do to kind of customize your terminal is go to the terminal menu and go to preferences. Now you get a lot of different themes here on the left hand side. If you click on one and click default, that's going to now be your default theme when you open up your terminal. So I have homebrew, I get this green text on black. I can make grass my default theme. Now I get this as my terminal window, so that's pretty cool. I personally kind of like the black and white, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. So I've got my black and white terminal. Another thing I don't like though is that whenever I open it, it kind of opens in this like square here and I always have to like manually resize it to go onto my screen. So I'd like if it just opened uh, in this box that takes up half the screen. And you can do that pretty easily with this uh, window size right here. So in your settings under window, you have columns and rows. If you look at your terminal window, you should see right here, you have this number, 100 times 53. That actually stands for the current size in columns and rows of your terminal window. So I can set it right here. So I could say like, I want 100 columns long and 50 rows high every time I open up my terminal. And if I close this out right now and open my terminal window, it'll open in the much bigger terminal prompt that I want. So that's really good. That's a little bit of convenience that I just added. You can also uh, modify your font, which I find useful to do because I don't really like Courier that much. So if I go to text and change, you can change the font that you want your terminal window uh, to be in. I like using Menlo because I think it's a little bit bolder and a little bit clearer what you're trying to write. So Menlo size 12, that works for me. And now I have a little bit of a slicker window, I think. So what about this prompt, right? This prompt right here is probably your bread and butter when it comes to customizing your terminal, and it's got a lot going on there. So the in Bash, um, your terminal prompt is modified by this variable called PS1. If I uh, export PS1 and I put anything in here, like I'm just going to put a basic shovel in a space, that's going to become my new prompt. So I can export any prompt I want to that PS1 variable and that becomes the prompt that I have. So when you're writing export PS1, it's important to note, one, don't put a space between the equals and the quotes. It's just PS1, an equal sign, and then quotes, and then whatever you want the prompt to be inside the quotes. Dollar, hello, prompt, dollar. And that's going to be my prompt now. Now, this is nice, but you're going to notice that if I close out of my terminal window and I open it again, um, the prompt that I wrote is gone. It, did, it didn't store it. Just hitting export PS1 only will change your prompt for that session. So, so how do I uh, make a prompt that I can customize and it opens every time I open terminal? So let's run an LS, which if you don't know just stands for list files. And you see that these are the files in your root directory. But there's actually an option we can pass into ls um, to display every file that starts with a dot. If you notice, um, none of these files, these are actually all directories. We can check if you do ls hyphen capital F. Uh, anything with a slash next to it will be a directory. Um, but this isn't everything that's in my root, that's in my root right now. Um, you can pass it the variable a, so ls hyphen a, and that's going to show you literally everything that's in that directory. It's like a reveal spell. And 
Anything that starts with a dot wasn't showing up before, but now I can see them. And I can see if they're files or not by adding that F to it. So I see that I have some files that weren't showing up before, and one is called dot bash underscore profile. Now you may not have a dot bash underscore profile. That's okay, because you can just create it right now. Um, but your dot bash profile is a file where all the uh, commands inside of it will run every time you open a new terminal window. So that's a great place to put the customization of your PS1 prompt because it'll run every time you open a terminal window and you'll get that prompt every time. So let me open up bash profile in TextMate. And you'll see I have this uh, little uh, script here that's from RVM, and I think RVM default creates that once you install it. But let, let's set PS1 equal to a prompt just like that. Remember, no spaces between the equals and the quotes. And let's open a new window, and now you'll see that I have my custom prompt. So there's actually a lot of really cool stuff you can do um, while making this prompt. One of the first things I like to do is add a new line character, the slash n. So that way, every time you open the prompt, it'll be on a new line. So if I run a simple command like who am I or ls, you see that you get this line break in between your prompt. So that, that's really nice. That's useful for me. Um, another nice thing you can do is you can add a slash w. That will give you your current working directory. So if I open a new prompt, I see that I have that little uh, tilde squiggly if I cd into my desktop. Now I see desktop, cd into survival pool, which is a Rails app I'm making for a NFL suicide survival pool. And I have the present working directory listed out right there, um, right there on my command line. So that's really nice to have. You can make it a capital W if you're a little fancier. And that's going to list the directory but the relative path. So it just puts the it just puts the uh, folder that you're in, the directory that you're currently in, without the path to it, and you just have to know how to navigate around. But that might be useful if you're going like seven or eight layers deep, and you don't want all that messing up your cram pro command prompt and uglifying it. You can do some other pretty cool stuff too. You can have a uh, at sign, which is going to give you the current date. I mean the current time, rather, with an AM PM signature. You can have a slash D, and that's going to give you the current date. And I mean, you can daisy chain these together as much as you want. I could do date, um, time, working directory if I wanted to. And that would give me the date, the time, and then the current working directory. So maybe that would be useful to have in my prompt. Um, there's a couple other things that you can do with this, too. You can add a uh, slash u, which will give you the username that you currently have. So I'm scissorbot3, don't ask. Um, you could have slash h, which will give you your host name. So that was what was default, by default, showing up there beforehand. So there, there's a lot of um, very, you know, there's a lot of customization you can add to this. There's another one that's a, a pound sign that will give you the current line number. So this is line one. If I run ls, now I'm on line two, ls line three. So maybe you want to know how many lines you've ran. You can do an exclamation point, which will really give you how many lines you've run like since you started using this. Like If you hit history, this will give you the line of every command you've ever ran. Even if you've been closing your uh, terminal, it logs them all out. So that might be useful if you ran a command and you need to remember how you did it. So you got the line number there. So there's a lot of uh, fun stuff you can do with that. Um, for me personally, I don't really need to know the date or time or my username. All I really need to know is my working directory. So I like just having it like this. And that's that's useful for me to have as a command line prompt. But you can have it however you want. So my next question is, how do you add some colors to this? right? Because I've seen a ton of people that have colorful prompts. And you could you know, go into preferences and change your theme, but that's and you know you can change the text color right here right if I change the text color to green it would become green you can change the selection it's this gray right now that's when you like select text it's gray I can make that red but I want to make it so that certain parts of my command prompt are different colors and in my case I want to make it just so that my working directory is turquoise because I just I, I like the way that looks a little bit better but I want the rest of it to still be in white so how do you do that? And you can do that right in your PS1, but it 
has probably the single ugliest syntax that I've ever encountered in my brief, you know, uh, flirtation with programming. I mean, this is way worse than even regular expressions. So let's just try to tackle it. Um, I'm going to try and make my working directory turquoise. And I'm just adding these spaces. I'm going to delete them out just so I can see what I'm working with here. And whenever you add a modification to your PS1 prompt, whenever you add any bit of information that you don't want to echo out, so something like a color, like just a command to change the color, you're going to need to put it in between brackets. But you're going to need to put it in between escaped brackets or the brackets will uh, echo out. So escaped brackets, and then you're going to put the color in between a slash E open bracket M. So you don't ever even close that bracket. It's just slash E open bracket M, and then you put in the color in between that. But the color is not just like the word blue, it's a number, and it's a number in the 30s. And you can just look these up, you can just Google them like PS1 prompt colors and bash or something. And I know that 31 is red, so if I made it 31 right now and opened a new one, you'll see that I've got my command prompt in red and all the spaces are still in there. 32, I believe, is green. 33 is yellow. And you can just look these up to see. But I know that uh, turquoise is 36. So I want turquoise 36, and I want my working directory to be in turquoise. So there we go. Now if I see the end of my desktop, I have turquoise, but not my working directory, the rest of everything is in uh, is in turquoise also. So after I print my working directory, I can make a new color here with the same escaped, bracket, escaped brackets, slash E, open bracket, M, and in between that I'm just going to put a zero. When you put a zero, that means go back to whatever the default color is. So this looks really confusing, but all it's saying is new line, change to turquoise, print the working directory, change back to the default color, and then shovel out this arrow and do whatever else. And you can put um, modifications to these colors. So if I put a semicolon and then a number, which is in its 40s, that's going to be a background color. So you can actually add background colors um, to the to the prompt as well. If you put a 1, that's going to make it bold. So 1 is bold, 40 something is background colors. You can really just Google these to see, but this works for me. I think this is a nice looking prompt, and if you see, now I can see the end of my desktop, see the end of survival pool, and it looks pretty nice. I got my turquoise and my white, so that works for me. Um, another really, really cool thing you can do to customize your terminal and bash profile is set up aliases. And aliases are just shortcuts. So they're just like setting up your own custom shortcuts to use in terminal. And you, you, this really helps you out because there's a lot of things in terminal that you end up, you know, typing in very, very frequently. Let me give you an example. Uh, how about Rails generate scaffold, right? I end up typing that a lot. So what if I wanted to just change this into being RGS? And I can do that by just saying alias RGS equals Rails generate scaffold. And now I have that custom shortcut every time I open a new terminal window that I can use RGS as Rails generate scaffold. So, you know, using the same kind of logic there, I could make RGM for Rails generate model. I can make RGC for Rails generate controller. And I, I can customize this to whatever I feel fit. I actually make one that's just alias R equals Rails. And that way, um, instead of having to type Rails console or Rails C, I can just type RC. And that will open Rails console or RS, and that'll open Rails server. So that makes that a little bit easier for me. Um, another good one is alias <laughs> migrate into rake db migrate, so I can just migrate my database with one word. That's a little helpful for me. Um, how about gst equals git status? So instead of having to type git status all the time to check um, how your git repo is doing, you can just hit gst. That one's really useful. And, you know, really whatever you want here. I'm just going to leave it at this, and we're going to test it out. So let me I'm in a git repo right now let me go to desktop survival pool and let me do git let me do gst and you'll see that I get my git status but I've got these pretty sweet green colors here if I git uh, reset my head and now run gst I've got 
red now to know that they're not in the staging area. How did I do that? I mean, I think that's awesome. So let, let's see how you do that. Let's CD back to the root directory. And if you didn't know, um, just hitting CD with no arguments will take you back to your root directory by default. And let's run that command we ran earlier, LSA, to reveal all the files. And you're going to see that I have this dot git config. Now you might not have a dot git config, but it's okay. You can just, you know, do mate dot git config and save it. And let me open it right now. And I've got this script in here. I just found this on the internet, actually. I don't really have any idea how it works, but I'll post it to my blog after, and you can copy it down. And this will add some color to your Git, um, to your Git uh, repos. So I, I'm going to look into probably how you make more of these, but this is pretty useful because I like having the colors just to see real quick what's in the staging area. So if I CD back to survival pool, and I run git status. Anything that's altered will be in red. And if I add it to the staging area, now it's going to be in green. So I can differentiate between what's in the staging area and not at a quick glance. So that's pretty useful. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've got for you. This is a pretty short screencast. But that I hope that's a decent introduction to how you can start swagging out your terminal window a little bit. Um, there's a lot of other cool stuff you can do. And I'm excited to try and learn more of it as well. But hopefully that's a good introduction. Remember always be coding.